Hey guys, Alex Leo here with Strokeball.com. Today in this video, we're gonna talk about creating, reinforcing, or maintaining the pelvic coil during the leg decline phase of your pitching mechanic. The pelvic coil is the counter rotation of the pitcher's pelvis over the femur of the pitcher's back leg. As we can see here with Dylan Cease, as his lead leg is declining and he is dropping into his glute, he is implementing the coiling of his pelvis over his back leg. The pelvic coil is extremely important because without the implementation and maintenance of the pelvic coil, the pelvis will begin to leak open during the leg decline and drive phases of the pitching delivery. As a result, rotational energy that could have been transferred during the rotational move with the lower half into front foot strike will be lost, which will result in a loss of potential energy transfer up the kinetic chain and into the throwing arm. An interesting finding I have discovered through my evaluation of elite level pro pitchers is that depending on the leg lift style of the pitcher, the pelvic coil can occur during different phases of the pitching delivery. As a result of this, the role of the pitcher when it comes to the pelvic coil mechanic during the leg decline phase varies. The acronym CRM stands for Create, Reinforce, or Maintain. These three verbs will be used to describe the responsibility of the pitcher when it comes to the action needed to be taken during the leg decline phase to ensure that pelvic coil is being properly integrated into the leg decline phase depending on the pitcher's leg lift style. I will explain the leg lift styles during the next section, but for now just know if the pitcher performs a front third leg lift, they need to create pelvic coil during leg decline. Middle third leg lift guys need to reinforce or maintain their pelvic coil during leg decline. And lastly, back third leg lift guys need to maintain their pelvic coil during the leg decline phase. Now let's look at the CRM theory in depth while looking at some pro examples. First, let's look at two guys I would consider to be front third leg lift guys, meaning their lead leg is located within the front third of their frame at peak leg lift. Front third leg lift guys have to really utilize the leg decline phase to implement coiling over the back leg. If they don't, they will have a hard time maintaining pelvic coil and back leg and hip tension throughout the drive phase. Let's look at Dylan Cease and Edwin Diaz as they go into leg decline and watch what their pelvis is doing. As you can see, as their leg is declining, they're actively coiling their pelvis over their back leg's femur. By coiling their pelvis during leg decline, back leg and hip tension is being created as they are dropping into their glute and into their hinge position. This tension will be utilized to prevent energy leaks during the drive phase where the pelvis begins to leak open, which we will cover more in the drive phase holding the hinge video. Here I have Shohei Otani. Otani is a pitcher I would classify as a middle third leg lift guy, meaning that his knee ends up in the middle third of his body at peak leg lift. Middle third leg lift guys begin to coil their pelvis slightly as they near peak leg lift. Middle third leg lift guys preferably should be slightly increasing the degree of pelvic coil during leg decline. At a minimum, middle third leg lift guys should be maintaining the degree of pelvic coil they generated by peak leg lift. Lastly, let's take a look at the third and final leg lift type, the back third leg lift. Back third leg lift guys lift their leg towards the back hip and into the back third of their frame at peak leg lift. Pitchers that lift to the back third do pretty much all of their coiling with the pelvis during their leg lift. So the main goal for them is to maintain as much pelvic coil as possible during their leg decline to prevent any energy leaks. So a couple reasons why getting the pelvis coiled over the back leg is important. Number one reason and really the main reason we integrate this pelvic coil is to prevent energy leaks with the pelvis where the pelvis is kind of bleeding open as we're driving towards our target. So during what that kind of would look like is if we weren't maintaining our pelvic coil or creating uh, depending on your leg lift style, essentially what you would start to see is, is as the pitcher is driving out, if they're not maintaining that pelvic coil, what's going to happen is the pelvis is going to start to bleed open as we're driving before we're even rotating. And what that's going to cause is is an energy leak to where as you had all this range with the pelvis to explode into front foot strike, you're gonna lose some of that to where you're almost kind of even like open or neutral. And then you're ultimately just gonna have a little bit of pelvic rotation in the front foot strike. So number one, we wanna maximize the amount of pelvic rotation we can generate into front foot strike. And so by integrating the pelvic coil over the back leg, we can do that. Number two, another reason why pelvic coil is important is we've talked about this idea of uh, back leg and back hip tension. If we begin to lose the pelvic coil and we're not keeping tight and kind of creating that back leg hip and tension, um, essentially what's gonna happen is that's also gonna cause energy leaks. And what that's gonna cause is we're not gonna have anything stable um, with our back leg to rotate against. If you're all loosey goosey here like this, when you go to rotate, it's gonna be a lot weaker of a rotational move into front foot strike because you don't have a solid foundation and a sturdy foundation to push against and rotate into front foot strike. So number two, to recap, is simply 
by integrating that pelvic coil, we're going to be um, essentially integrating that back leg and back hip tension that will give us a strong foundation to rotate into front foot strike with. Here are some drills you guys can try out that I've used to help teach the pelvic coil CRM theory during the leg decline phase. This first drill is what is referred to as the Clevenger drill. For this one, just grab a kettlebell between 10 and 20 pounds and place it above your back shoulder. Here I'm focusing on reinforcing and maintaining the pelvic coil during leg decline. In this drill, we aren't worried about rotating into front foot strike, so ensure that when you land, your pelvis is still coiled over the back leg and pointed towards third base. Try and integrate your leg lift style into this drill. In my example, I'm performing different leg lift styles. This next drill is referred to as the step back drill. I like this drill because when shifting your weight backwards, I find it helps players sit into their glute and incorporate the pelvic coil oftentimes naturally. Integrate your leg lift style and perform the CRM method that you should be performing during leg decline based on your leg lift style. Ensure you try and keep the pelvis coiled as long as possible during the drive phase. Here's a step back variation where I am using the core velocity belt. In this variation, I have a setup to where a band is trying to pull my back hip and pelvis open prematurely. By using this setup, I find it really helps me focus on fighting, letting the pelvis open prematurely, and therefore it helps me focus on maintaining my pelvic coil throughout the leg decline and drive phase. I really recommend a core velocity belt when trying to train the pelvic coil. In this last variation, I am working some full deliveries out of the stretch with the same core velocity belt setup. This is a really good one for learning the feeling of holding the pelvic coil throughout the early phases of the pitching delivery. Try and integrate your leg lift style and the CRM method you should be performing during the leg decline phase into this drill. Also, I'll attach a link at the bottom of this video where you can go ahead and purchase the core velocity belt if you want. As always, thanks for watching. If you want to see more baseball improvement videos or submit a video for analysis with us, check us out at strokeball.com, your home for practicing smarter to improve faster.